Hey guys, I'm Scott Meek, manager of Diesel Training. Today I want to show you a quick tech tip that I think is going to be helpful for you. And this tech tip actually pivots off of another tech tip that I did a few months back where we went in and we verified voltages for our data bus communication on our 9-pin. Well, now that we know what we should expect at that 9-pin, now we need to take that one step further. So in this video, I'm going to show you a quick tip that I used to use in the field all the time that would help me determine if I was getting correct communication on my data bus. Remember, if you find these videos helpful, be sure to subscribe. And if you like what you saw today, please click that thumbs up. Now, one tool that you have probably laying around your shop right now, and a lot of shops have a lot more than one sitting around, is going to be a communication device. And oftentimes, you're going to find that that communication device is manufactured by Nexic. So if you have a device like this in your shop, whether it's a Nexic 1, a Nexic 2, or a Nexic 3, any one of those will work with what I'm about to show you. When you download the drivers for this device, you're going to get a free program called the Device Tester. The Device Tester is something that we can use to determine if we are getting traffic on the data bus, getting good messages, and where those messages are coming from, which modules or source addresses or module identifiers, depending on if you're on 1708. So, whenever you get this tool, connect it to your PC, make sure that your drivers are downloaded, and you're going to go to your desktop and you're going to look for a software that says Nexic Device Tester. If it's not on your desktop, just go down to your search bar and type in Device Tester. Now, we're going to go ahead and show you that, and in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up. So now that we got our COM device connected, we're going to go ahead and open up our Nexic device software. Once we open that software, it's going to prompt us to choose what do we want to test. And remember, in that previous video, we talked about what channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3 would typically hold. Remember, on most on-highway heavy-duty vehicles, channel 1 will be your primary 1939 CAN bus. Channel 2 will typically be 1708, and channel 3, remember, is OEM's choice, okay? So in this case, if I'm having a communication problem with either my entire bus or one specific module, I'm going to be able to quickly use this software to determine which module it is or which bus it is. So now that we got everything hooked up, let's go ahead and open up the device tester software and take a look at what's streaming on our bus currently. So once you're ready, if you have the icon on your screen already, it will look like this. If this icon is not present on your desktop, but you have already downloaded the drivers and your Nexic device works, then just come down into the search bar and type in device tester. To open the software, all we have to do is double click. So once we've got the software open, you'll notice here in the upper bar, you'll have your bus messages. So if you have data that's transmitting, it'll be in this box here. You're just looking for a bunch of numbers essentially that are constantly scrolling across the screen. Down here in the second field will be your modules detected. Here, we'll choose the device that we're using. In my case, I'm using a Nexic USB Link 2. And then here is where I have to choose what protocol that I'm looking for. Now remember, typically, if you're trying to just communicate to the data bus to pull fault codes or do a system scan or whatever function you're trying to do on the public data bus, most of that data is going to be transmitted on channel 1 or pins C and D. Remember, that's likely going to be 1939. So, we're going to choose protocol 1939 channel 1. So, once I select the drop down, here you'll see we have J1939 channel 1, baud rate is auto. Once I've made that selection, now I'm going to click start test. Now, once I've clicked start test, you're going to notice here in that upper field for the bus messages, then we have a bunch of information that's constantly running across that screen. On the lower field where the module is detected, you're going to see here that we have a 249 offboard diagnostics, which is our PC that we're communicating with. We have source address 0, which is engine number 1, source address 3, which is transmission number 1, source address 15, which is the engine retarder, source address 5, which is the shift console for the transmission. We have 23, which is the instrument cluster, and we have source address 11, which is brakes, the system controller. Now the source address is a specific number that's dedicated to a specific module on the J1939. So for an example, if you're dealing with the primary engine on a data bus, the one that's making the vehicle move, that will always be source address zero. 
This information is in your J1939 documentation. Again, same example, three, source address three. That is going to be your transmission. So it does give you the source address, and it also gives you the description of that source address, but you always have to be careful because, for an example, if you're working on a vehicle that had, was outfitted with a body that maybe had a, an engine of its own to operate the body, and it communicated with the public bus, you might have source address zero, which is engine number one, and then you might have source address one, which would be engine number two. So make sure that you're looking and, and making sure that the engines that you're working on or the components that you're working on match your configuration. So by running this quick test, I quickly found out by using this free device tester that comes with that Nexit cable that my engine, my transmission, my engine retarder, my shift console, my instrument cluster, and my brakes are all communicating on the data bus on channel one. Now, in the event that you wanted to check your channel two, which in most cases are 1708, we're going to do the same thing. But this time, we're going to set the protocol for 1708. So we're going to stop the test, click the drop down box, and then we're going to choose 1708 from the drop down menu. Now I'm going to click start test. Once I've done that, you'll notice that we still have information being broadcast at a much slower rate because 1708 communicates slower than 1939. And then you'll see here we have a module identifier 130 transmission. 136 brakes and 172 offboard diagnostics. Now 1708 identifies their modules a little differently. Remember in 1939 it's called a source address. In 1708 it's called a module identifier or a MID. But here's what I want you to notice. If you remember when we checked J1939 it showed transmission and brakes. But now we're checking 1708 on channel 2 where it shows also transmission and brakes. Some manufacturers and some modules will communicate on different protocols at the same time. So brakes and transmission in this example, we have communication on 1939 and communication on 1708. Two protocols, same module. It's only one module. But they do that because one will be for public data bus communication, the other one will be for their diagnostics of their own systems. So it's really important that you don't just assume, since I have it on 1939, that it's good. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So again, two modules that are very common that share 1939 and 1708 simultaneously would be transmission and brakes. But as you can see, we checked channel one for 1939. All of our modules were present communicating. We checked channel two, which is 1708. All modules expected are present and communicating. Now let's go to channel three and see what happens. So now I'm gonna stop that test. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to check J1939 channel 3 to see if channel 3 may be communicating on 1939 as well. If I click start test, notice that it says error. It cannot detect the baud rate. Now, that tells me that obviously 1939 is not on channel 3 in this case. So now I'm going to do a quick view of the 9 pin, make sure that there are pins in channel 3. And if there are pins, I'm going to check my voltages and try to figure out what type of bus might be on channel 3. And upon close inspection, I see that I do not have any pin terminals in channel 3. So that quick test just proved that channel 1 is 1939. I'm sending the correct data. Channel 2 is 1708. I'm sending the correct data. Both had the correct modules that were present that were suspected to be present, and now that test is complete. So we hope that this really helped you, showing you this quick little tip on how to utilize a free software with a tool that you already have in your shop for data bus communication. If you found this helpful, be sure to click subscribe, press that like button, and we hope to see you soon.